consider this class a beginner class. Um, so whether you're new to Silhouette or if you're a longtime user, um, you're going to be able to pump out this card super quick and it's super easy, super fun. I think it would be a good kids craft um, to give to their teacher at the end of school. That's kind of what we created the card in mind for. So it says like, have a great summer on it and it has this cute popsicle and this cute sun. And um, we thought you could give them to your teacher at the end of school. You can make them with your kids and there's a little card on the back to write a little message or you could make a whole bunch and have them give them to their friends, something like that. So that was kind of the idea behind the card, but if you just want to give it to your neighbor or your family member, that totally works too. So we just have a few more people that, are, that came in. So welcome everybody, we're so happy to have you. Um, my name is McKenna Blanthorne and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Silhouette America. We're coming to you live from our Silhouette studio. This is in our headquarters in Utah. And um, we're just coming into spring, almost summer. It was like 80 degrees over the weekend. So it's been super nice and we all have summer fever after winter. So um, we're super excited to make this class for you today or make this card in this class for you today. And we um, are going to just be using paper. So the class is really simple because all we're doing is we're just using paper and then adhesive. And you can use any kind of adhesive you want. I have a couple different types right here um, that I'm gonna show you that I think are great options for this project. So you can just use a glue stick. This is like the, they're like these little rainbow glue sticks. Um, it's Avery brand and I did get this at Michael's. And um, my mom was a first grade teacher while I was growing up and she swears by these glue sticks. She won't use any other kind. Um, the Elmer's ones, like the purple ones, she hates them. So we're gonna be using these glue sticks. I always buy these ones because that's what my mom always used growing up. And then um, you can use a tape runner. I love the tape runner. It's perfect for everything that's not a small piece. So um, anything that's big, and this card has quite a few big pieces. It only has a few small pieces. So the tape runner keeps everything in place really, really nice and holds it super great. And then um, these little tiny liquid glue sticks that are Elmer's glue, um, and they're just like glue, like it's liquid glue, and it's called the precision tip. It's not the needle nose print that some glue sticks are. That is a great option too, but it's just super tiny and the glue just comes out the top. And this one's pretty nice. This is what I'm gonna probably use for my little tiny pieces. Liquid glue can be kind of messy, um, but lately I've been using these because they hold really, really well. So you can use any of these three adhesives. You can use all three. I might use all three <laughs> by the time we're done. So those are the adhesive that we're using. And then I'm just using the rainbow stack of paper from Michaels. This is my favorite stack of paper. Um, if you look at the Silhouette social media, I run the social media for Silhouette. That's like the main part of my job. And I get to make a lot of like the paper projects that are on there especially. And we always use um, this paper. So it's my favorite. It cuts really, really well. There's so many colors. It's 200 sheets for like $19.99, which is a super good deal on different colors of paper. And there's so many colors. We took out a few of the colors because we were going for like the summer, um, vibrant pastel vibe kind of so we took out a few of the colors but this is most of them and you can just see there's so many good options so many good um, different like tones which I really like I like doing like orange tones and pink tones um, so I really like doing that type of thing and then um, I Stokes asked where the paper is from. I just got it from Michaels. So everything we're using today comes from Michaels. This is a Michaels Zoom class. Um, we're using the Silhouette machine um, that you can also buy at Michaels. And so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start out by sharing my screen with you and we're gonna talk about where we can get the design that we're gonna be using today. So this is the, sorry, I gotta move my Zoom window, okay. Um, the design that we're going to be using is actually our free design of the week right now. So even if you aren't making the card with me today, which I suggest just watching the class and getting all the tips and tricks and then um, following along after because it will be posted on YouTube and then you can pause it and cut your pieces and everything like that. But to find the design, we're going to go to silhouettedesignstore.com 
And this is awesome. If you're new to Silhouette, we literally have thousands of designs um, on the Silhouette Design Store that are just ready to go. You don't have to do anything to them. We're currently having our Mother's Day sale, so it's up to 50% off all Mother's Day and flower designs, which is super awesome. And if you just click through these banners, we're having a designer sale right now, um, some design bundles. This is our free design of the week, which is the card that we're making today and a credit boost sale. And you can learn more about the credit boost sale if you click on it, but it's a super awesome way to get credits too. So um, if you're watching this live, you can click on the free design of the week, or I wanna show you guys the design ID, which is more than likely um, how you're gonna find the card that we're making. So the design ID is 347646. It's listed down here, and if I was just coming and watching this class afterwards and I wanted to find this card, I would just type that design ID up here, 347646, and then I would hit enter and it would bring up the card. And I've already purchased the card. Um, right now it's free, so you don't even have to purchase it if you download it before the end of the week. So make sure you go and do that today. Um, but if I, you hadn't downloaded or bought the card yet, it's free. So bought is a relative term, but there would be a little grocery cart that would show up right here and I would click that, it's blue, and then it would add it to my cart and then um, I would be able to just check out as normal even though it's free. So even if you haven't, um, if you're not making the card today, make sure you download it so you don't have to pay for it. This one, they um, made black sunglasses and it's kind of like more bright colors. The ones that I made, I used pastels, which I really, really liked, um, but it's totally up to you. That's my favorite thing about paper crafting is we can really make it whatever um, colors we want. So that's how you grab the design. If anybody has any questions up to this point, go ahead and drop them in the chat. I'm gonna be monitoring the chat the best that I can. Um, I really love answering your questions. They can be about the machine, about the project, anything like that. So if you have any questions, drop them in the chat and um, I'm gonna be watching that the best I can. When we jump into the software, which we're gonna do right now, it's a little bit harder to monitor the chat, but I'll be trying to pull it up as much as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my screen share and we're gonna jump into the software. So this is what Silhouette Studio looks like when you pull it up. Um, it is super awesome. It, has, it does so many things. Um, Ibati just asked if this machine has a pen, and it does have a pen, we're not using it today, but um, there is a pen attachment you can use on the machine. So I hope that answers your question. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna come up here to my library, and it's this tab right up here, and then I have a lot of designs, as you can tell. Um, so the easiest way, if it's not showing up, I recommend coming down and pressing this sync button, and that will make sure everything's up to date and you have all of the um, designs that you just bought from the design store. So I have so many designs and I could scroll through and look for them, but it can be kind of hard to do that <laughs> because there's so many designs. So this card was called um, Out of School. So I'm just gonna type out and it pops up right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it and then it brings up all of my pieces right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit and drag my pieces to the side. And we don't always get um, 3D designs for free. Um, we do free designs of the week pretty much every week, but it's kind of rare that they're 3D designs. So I'm super excited that this one's a 3D card and I love these three different layered cards. I think they're super fun. So we're gonna go ahead and just get started crafting. But one thing that I love to do um, when we do these classes is I like to let you guys pick what colors we use. So I did narrow it down a little bit. I took out, you know, like the red and things like that. But um, we're gonna be cutting this Have a Great Summer piece first. Um, so which color do you want to use for that one? I'm gonna give you three options. I think we could do, um, let's see, we used the dark pink, which I thought was really cute. So we can do dark pink, or I think a purple would be fun. I haven't done a purple, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this purple, the darkish purple. Or um, I guess we can go in orange direction too. So pink, purple, or orange. Okay, all right. Ellie says orange, Ibati says purple. 
Okay, it looks like we finally got a few votes for purple, so we're going to do purple. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and load this on the mat. I'm using the light tack mat, um, but you can use the standard tack. Um, it will be a little bit more sticky, but this light tack mat is fairly new, and it's pretty sticky itself. So I'm going to pull off the cover, and just set it to the side, and then just load it into the corner up here. And then we're just going to load it into the machine. So you're going to want to um, line your mat up with this white line that has the two arrows. That's how you know where to put it. And then you press the load button. And then I'm going to start my screen share again. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the have a great summer. Oh, there is this white piece too. I always forget about it until I try and put something over here. So you're going to load this um, have a great summer piece onto the mat. And we don't have to change anything about it. Like I said, this class is fairly beginner friendly because we don't have to change a single thing. So um, I just put it on the mat. Everything's outlined in red. So that means everything's going to cut. Um, a lot of the time when we do this class, we get the question, what does cut edge mean? So I have this selected. And if I selected cut edge, it um, would just be cutting out. It just kind of makes it look weird. Um, it wouldn't cut out these words. And I think the reason it's cutting it out right now is because it's a compound path. Um, but you just want to make sure that it's selected with cut to make sure it cuts out all your pieces. And then I'm using the auto blade, so all I need to do is select my material that I'm using. And I'm using cardstock textured heavy. Um, I always select this one no matter what kind of cardstock that I'm using um, because it is just. I think all cardstock is heavy, and I found that it works the best. And then I actually like to bump it up to a four um, when I cut cardstock, just because I found that works better. You can do it at a three, and it will probably cut, but um, I just like to do it at a four. That's kind of just the rule of thumb that I always do. And then we're going to leave the force at 30 and the speed at four. And then I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to press send. And then I'll stop the screen share so you guys can watch the machine. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat for me. Okay, it's cutting super good. One thing that I like about this that um, our silhouette designer did is she made it so we don't have to like um, glue the inside pieces of the letters. So we can just, um, well, they don't even cut in the design. They're kind of just a blocky font, which I think makes it easier. So Carly said, when I'm in the send screen, it shows two outlined red lines, like it's going, going to cut two separate areas. So Carly, I think what happened is you probably need to move the, did you move the white piece off the artboard? Because that's a common problem for me. Um, sometimes I leave the white pieces on there and I forget about it. So, yes, okay, perfect. I'm so glad that answered your question, but know that I did, this, I did the same thing. Say, okay, and then which Cameo do we have? This is the Cameo 4. Um, so this is the Cameo that has like, it's the newest Cameo. It came out a few years ago. Um, but if you have a Cameo 3 or whatever, you could still do this project. If you have a portrait machine, you could also do this project um, because it, we're using letter size paper. So. Um, this cut super great, I'm pretty sure. Yes, I just like to pull up the corner just to make sure. So I'm going to unload it by pressing the downward arrow button. And then I always peel away the excess paper first. And it will kind of curl. Um, I still use them as scraps because when you cut it later, you know, you're going to stick it down on the page anyway. And if you put it in like a file or something that has lots of papers in it or is tight, it will flatten out. So I'll just go ahead and cut that off in my spare time and then um, put it in my scraps folder. But I like to turn it over so that um, our actual piece we're using doesn't curl. And then I just hold it down. I'm using the Silhouette Spatula tool, but I mean, you can use your fingers too or whatever you have laying around in your craft room. Okay, so that cut perfectly. Um, as you can see right here, we have our little negative space and it turned out super great. And it didn't curl at all when we flipped it over and did it like that. 
So I'm just going to use the spatula tool to move over the pieces. This is actually really hard to do with your fingers. I don't suggest using your fingers for trying to get all the little pieces off because it is very frustrating. <laughs> it's even sometimes frustrating with the spatula because small pieces just don't want to come up. They just want to stay on the mat. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and sweep these off the table into the garbage. Okay. Um, all right, so then we're going to go ahead. So Ibati asked, is Cameo for the newest machine? So it's um, the newest Cameo, but we also have the Cameo Pro and the Cameo Plus, which are the same as the Cameo 4. They're just larger. Um, so the Cameo Plus is 15 inches and the Cameo Pro is 24 inches and that's actually the biggest cu uh, DIY cutting machine on the market. So if you're into big projects, the Cameo Pro is for you. Um, but if 12 inches is enough for you, I highly suggest the Cameo 4. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next section. So um, since we chose purple for this section, um, the next one, let's see, what would look good with that? So we're going to do, um, well, the yellow section, we have to do yellow because um, it has a sun on it, and I believe in making objects the color that they're supposed to be. <laughs> so we're going to do yellow. I'm just going to come down and grab this one. Um, and I'm just doing the same exact thing. I know you guys are on my screen right now. Um, but I'm just loading the yellow piece of paper onto the mat and then loading it into the machine. Okay, so I just um, dragged the yellow piece onto the um, sheet, the artboard. And if you zoom in, you can see these dotted lines. And those are the, um, like, scored lines. So these, this piece folds, and so when we go to fold it, it'll already be all scored for us. So we're going to go to the send panel, just keep everything the same. Like I said, this project is pretty easy. Um, it doesn't take a lot of different techniques or different tips, anything like that. It's just dragging on the pieces, loading the paper, and unloading it. Okay, does anybody have any questions? I'm going to go ahead and look at the chat. Ellie is super good at answering questions. She has awesome advice. So. Um, if you have any questions and she answers it, trust her. <laughs> okay. Okay. That piece was really fast to cut. That's also one thing I like about this project is everything goes pretty fast. So I just like to check. Even though I'm using the same cut settings, I still just like to check every single time. So I saw somebody mentioned that they couldn't get the sun piece to separate, and we are actually going to go over that. Um, we just need to ungroup it. So don't worry, we are going to go over that. So I'm just turning it over, and I actually just ripped it. So we might still be able to salvage it because that's a back piece anyway. Um, we're going to layer stuff on top of it. So I'm probably just going to tape it. but. Know that even here at Silhouette Headquarters, we don't do everything perfectly with our projects either. <laughs> so I think we can definitely salvage it. So I'm just going to put it to the side right here. Okay. So then we're going to start our screen share again. And we're cutting out all of our big pieces right now, and then we're going to come back and do the small pieces. So um, if your sun piece isn't separating for whatever reason, um, you just are going to right click and then mine's not grouped. So I'm not sure um, if yours got grouped by accident, but um, you're just going to come up here and it would say ungroup selected shapes and you would be able to pull your sun away. So I'm just going to, I like to always when I'm working on something, drag the pieces I have cut to one side so I know. So this one is grouped together. So I'm just going to click it, and then I'm going to press ungroup. And we actually need to keep the dotted lines together um, with the 
the blue piece. So I'm actually going to draw a rectangle over that and then group it. Um, because if you don't do that, your piece won't be scored. And that makes it you know, difficult to fold. You're not sure where to fold it. And when I cut these, I like to turn them vertically. And then um, for this one, I think a light blue would look nice. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the light blue piece. And I'm just loading it onto the mat. I promise you're not missing anything if you don't see me doing this right now. <laughs> okay, and then we're just going to go to the sun panel again and send it. Oh, whoops. Okay, so Danielle, I know you were having trouble with the sun piece separating, so let me know if it didn't separate, um, and I can go over that one more time. Um, we're going to do the sunglasses next, and then we're going to do the popsicle, so, and then we'll do the sun piece at the very end. Okay, so I'm just going to check it, looks good, unload it. It's good when our mats are sticky and you have a new mat because small pieces like this cut really well. Um, but you just need to be gentle when you're peeling them off. And I actually, at my house, I've been working on some Mother's Day projects and my mat is not sticky at all. I'm having to tape my pieces down. And um, I think that's probably why I ripped the yellow piece because I forgot what it's like to have a new mat. <laughs> So just be gentle when you're taking it off. So there's our three um, big pieces. So we have yellow, blue, and purple. And then um, for this outer piece of the sun, let's go ahead and use this like iron rod paper, I guess. This one's cute. That'll look nice, I think. So um, we're just gonna load that on. So um, it looks like you said you got the sun piece to separate, but the popsicles coming apart in tiny pieces, that's what you want. So um, we are going to go over the popsicle, but we're going to do the sun first. So we're just going to put this piece over here. Oh, and we do need to do the white back piece also. So um, this is our sun piece, and I'm going to try and be very, very gentle when I pull this one off because this is the tiniest piece that we're using. Hey Carly, I'm glad that you got yours to start cutting. I know that the blades can be kind of frustrating sometimes, um, but when you get it to work, I promise, like, as you can see, we've cut so many pieces in a matter of, you know, seven minutes maybe. So I know it can be kind of frustrating at the start, but um, once you get going, it goes really smoothly. And I hardly use any of this piece of paper, and I don't want it to curl, so I'm actually going to turn it over and peel the mat away. and then we're just going to put these down here and then turn this over. So what do you guys think? Do you think if you're new to Silhouette, is this a project that you guys can make? Is it, does it seem kind of hard? I know there's a lot of pieces, so I'm curious because I kind of requested this card. Um, I worked with the designer hand in hand because I thought that this one would be like a fairly simple Zoom class. Um, but let me know. So let me know in the chat what you think. Okay. We're going to pull this over here. And then let's do the white piece just so we get all those pieces out of the way. So I know I have white over here on the bottom of my stack. The white piece was actually something I specifically requested from the silhouette designer because I wanted there to be space to write a message on it. Um, so that's something that I really wanted included. So we're just going to cut this one. This one's going to be super, super simple. Okay. 
So Alexandra said um, they're new to all of these, but they totally do it. Um, where can I get the design? And Ellie um, actually added the link to the design. So thank you so much, Ellie. And I really do think it's a, it's a pretty simple card. Um, I have recently been starting to silhouette craft with my mom and she has a, um, she's like pretty new, like she hasn't ever done something like this before and she could make this card by herself, I think. I think when I'm thinking of a design to do for a Zoom class or a project to do for a Zoom class, I always want to think of something that I think she could do by herself and I think this project totally falls in that category. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this over to the side and now um, we're going to do all of our tiny, tiny pieces. So I'm going to screen share and um, let's do the popsicle. So as you can see, we need to ungroup this because if we didn't ungroup it, sorry, I'm going to drag that off. If we didn't ungroup it, only the outline of the popsicle would cut, which we don't want. So you're going to come up here to your ungroup button and I just like to click it a bunch of times. Um, I think that pulls all the pieces apart. Yes, okay. So to start off, let's do the big piece. Um, we can make the popsicle a different color. I did pink, and I guess we don't have any pink on our card, so I think that would be cute. Um, so let's do a pink one. Um, let's do the dark pink. And one thing, if you have a bunch of paper scraps, you actually can um, cut these pieces at the same time by cutting out, um, cutting down your pieces and putting them in like the four corners. Um, I am, I am just using paper today because I don't have any scraps. So I'm just loading them all in. Um, but that is something you can do with the silhouette machine. Okay. So Megan asked, can you take a second to review what has already been cut? This is a moving a little too fast. Um, that's totally okay, Megan. Um, I totally understand. It can be really fast because these classes are only an hour and we need to assemble it and everything. So I kind of got to go fast. And that's why I love that they're recorded um, because then you can go back and watch it. So the only things that we have left to cut are the other pieces of the popsicle and then the sunglasses. So... It is a lot of pieces, but it'll turn out very cute. So I'm going to grab the other tone of pink for the insides of the popsicle. Yes, so it, it will be posted on Michael's YouTube channel within, I think it's 24 to 48 hours. Um, they'll post everything on there. So, And then these ones go together, they're the same color, so we're just going to put them up in the corner and send it. And then while this is cutting, um, you can actually move your next piece onto the board. And this one's so tiny. Um, I think I will cut down a little piece for this one just because it's so small. So I'm just going to take my gray piece and cut a little corner off of it. We're going to unload this one. Okay, and these ones actually um, a little bit stuck to the paper, which is totally fine. That just sometimes happens when you're moving small pieces around. So um, don't rip them out or anything, just kind of gently, gently wiggle them and they'll just pop out. And I cut my fingernails very, very short last night, and so I can't pick up all the small pieces. <laughs> okay, we have the gray piece. I'm just going to load this little square into the corner. And then I'm just going to send that, but I'm not going to um, screen share because you guys got it down at this point. It's pretty much all the same. So um, at this point, I think I will 
um, start my screen share now so we can set up the sunglasses. Um, so I'm going to drag this over here. That's already done cutting, so I'm going to unload that. Peel away my scrap. And then we're just left with our little piece. Okay, so um, we're going to grab the sunglasses now. There's a few really tiny pieces. Um, so it looks like our base piece for the sunglasses is baby blue. So I think we could do, um, if we want to use like all the colors of the rainbow, we could do green. We don't have any green on the card. So maybe let's do that. Um, It'll be like a cute pastel, um, bright rainbow type card. So I'm just going to load the lime green onto the paper. And then um, we need to ungroup this. So we're going to come up here. We're just going to ungroup a few times. Oh, whoops, I was pressing the group button. OK, so um, now all my pieces pull apart. So the gray pieces are going to be the same color. And then we will do these little tiny pieces white. So um, I'm just going to drag the base color over here onto the board. And then um, load it in and send it. One thing I did want to mention about the person that said that um, they didn't know which pieces we'd cut yet and which ones we hadn't, that's one reason why I really like to drag all my pieces over to this side after I cut them because then I know that these pieces still need to be cut and these ones don't. That's why I love buying files from the Silhouette Design Store too because you can design your own files in Silhouette Studio which is really fun if that's something that you're comfortable doing. But for the most part, all the files are ready to go exactly as they are. So um, it's kind of just narrowing it down and whittling away all of the little pieces. Okay, I'm just um, taking the sunglasses off the piece right now. And then um, we have our, let's do the lenses, the light green. And like I said, you can literally do any color combo you want. That's why I love the giant rainbow pack from Michaels because it has so many options. So I'm just going to drag these over here and then put the gray ones on and send it. Okay. Okay, and then I realized our other piece, that we're, our tiny pieces are white. So I'm just grabbing my scrap of white paper you could have cut these at the same time. Since I hadn't ungrouped them, I didn't realize that they were white. So I just cut off a little square for us, because these are the tiniest pieces that we're going to be using. Um, so I'm going to unload this, and then we have one more cut, and then we just get to assemble it. So I always turn the mat over. It's just, it works better, it's nice and smooth, and my pieces just generally come out better if I turn over the mat. See, even that one, it kind of curved up a little bit. I don't know if you can tell, but I mean, we're gluing it down, so it's OK. But OK, last cut. I know we've loaded and unloaded the mat a billion times, but I promise this is the last one, unless we can't salvage the yellow piece and we have to recut it, which we might have to. I don't think we will, but we'll see. Okay. Um, I'm just going to send this to the machine. And you can move these little white pieces close together to use less paper, too. They're so tiny, you got to zoom in to see them. There should be a red outline showing up around them, and it's not showing up. I'm not sure why, but usually it does show up, so keep that in mind. Okay, and it was so fast. It's just a little tiny cut. 
So I'm going to unload this one. And I'm actually going to leave these two pieces on the mat for right now because they're so tiny and I don't want them to get lost on the table. So at this point, I'm going to move the computer aside. I am still monitoring the chat. Um, so keep your questions in there. Looks like we have some good questions and answers going on. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm assembling this card is I just like to um, fold all of my score lines. And they're already there for us, like we really don't even have to do very much for it. And then um, there's one more, the yellow piece has some score lines. Perfect. And then um, we're just going to assemble it. So I like to assemble my small pieces, um, like the sunglasses and the popsicle and the sun. So let's do the sunglasses first. So I'm going to go ahead and use the roller because these pieces are decently sized. So I'm just going to do an X on the back of these. And you can go as close as you want. Um, and then I just line them up with the, the nose piece right there. And it's OK if it's not perfect. Um, especially if you're making it with little kids or something like that. I think this card is really impressive in itself. Like whoever you give it to is going to love it. So even if it's not perfect, you're okay. Okay, and then um, we're going to take our little tiny pieces off the mat. I'm just going to scoot them this way. And then for these ones, I'm not going to use um, the glue gun, the tape gun. I'm going to unroll this thing. This is called the, oh, and this one's actually stuck, I think. Okay, we're not going to use that, actually. This is the pick-me-up tool, and as you can see, it has like a little gummy side to it, and you can just use it to um, pick up the tiny pieces without touching them, but I'm just going to use my glue stick. So most of you probably don't have the pick-me-up tool anyway. So I just tapped my glue stick right on the top of it and just kind of ran it across the glue stick for a sec, and then just put it in the corner. And then same thing. And your, stick, your fingers will get a little more sticky if you do it that way. Um, but as long as you have a clean finger to push it down with, you should be good. Okay, so there's our sunglasses. And we're going to go ahead and glue them onto the front of the blue piece. And I'm going to use the tape runner. And like I said, all of these adhesives I bought at Michael's. You could also use a hot glue gun if you wanted to. Someone asked, can you put the same um, different p colors of paper on the mat if they need the same set settings and cut it all at once? And you can do that. They just obviously can't be the full size sheets of paper. So this is our sunglasses. Um, sheet. I love the green and the blue. I think that's super cute. And then um, we're going to do the sun next. And this one is just kind of messy. Um, I'm actually just going to use like a scrap piece of paper and just get glue all around it. And when you're using a glue stick, don't like um, smear it and go push super hard. I think it's just better if you just lightly keep brushing it over the top because then you don't get any clumps of glue. And then you're just going to line it up with the piece. There we go. Perfect. And then just push it down. Okay, and then our popsicle. So um, if I was making this for somebody, I probably would fix um, the tear, but it's, it is going to be covered up completely um, by the popsicle, the pink piece, which is super awesome, makes it really nice. So that's kind of a nice thing too. So if something tears, don't freak out until you go to assemble it. And then if it doesn't work, you should recut it. So I just put, um, I use my glue stick to get these little edges. And then I just put it down like that. 
And then we're going to take this popsicle stick. And just line it up right with the line. Everything um, with the exception to the these little popsicle lines pretty much has like a edge you line it up with, which is really nice. It makes it easy to assemble for beginners or people that are just starting out or even I'm not starting out, but I really appreciate that because it makes it a lot easier to assemble. Okay, we're just gonna glue these pink lines. I think the popsicle is my favorite part of the card. I think it's so cute. So we're just gonna glue the lines down. Parallel to each other. Okay, so this is our middle piece and it's all assembled. So now we just need to do the last few things, like put all the pieces together. So the one thing we are gonna do is put the white piece on the back. So make sure you flip it over and then um, this just lays right down here, like right across it. Um, so we're gonna glue it down. It's, it's kind of a hard piece because you don't wanna get anything like up here. So I'm actually gonna take my tape runner and on the purple one and just put a line next to the T. Um, and then I'm pretty much gonna leave this area blank um, where, where the T or the words are gonna be. But then I'm gonna come all the way up this side and then I'm gonna come all the way across the bottom. And it's okay if it's not straight. These things stay down really, really good. And then we're gonna come up this side. And then we're gonna come a few, maybe like an inch or inch and a half in the other way. And I actually did that on the wrong side because I was looking at it wrong. So you're gonna be able to see um, the adhesive right there. You probably can't see it. It just gives it a shiny look, um, which is okay, so. Um, I would probably redo it if we had time in the class, but um, we're going to go ahead and assemble it anyway because it's still really cute. So the way you assemble this card now, or actually before we assemble it, we're going to write the message on the back. And I have a bunch of really cute markers back here. Um, so if somebody wants to put a color in the chat that you want me to write the message in, um, go ahead. We have pretty much every color, pink, yellow, blue, purple, green, red everything. So Carly said turquoise. So I think this one looks turquoise-ish to me. Yeah, perfect. And then I'm just going to go ahead with the fine tip side and just write a little message. So I'm going to say, um, if I was writing this to like my teacher, if I was a little kid or something like that, I would just say, thanks for a great year. I loved being in your class. And then if I was little girl McKenna, I would write, love McKenna. <laughs> I guess I always think of like the teacher sense because um, my mom was a teacher as I was growing up and then my grandma was a teacher and my great grandma was a teacher and my sister is also a teacher, so a lot of teachers. So then we're gonna go ahead and assemble it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my um, tape runner on the sides. And this is especially what I recommend using a tape runner for. If you use a glue stick, it'll be just, it won't dry as fast and it won't um, just stick in the exact place you want it. So if you use the tape runner, you're just going to Oh, actually, we need to put this on this card. That's what's wrong. Yeah, so the blue one is, or the yellow one is gonna line up right here with the blue, I believe, yes. So you're just gonna put the yellow in the center of the blue piece. Actually, I lied, you're gonna line it up. Oh, sorry, guys. This is a little bit, I just forgot how to do it, I guess. Um, you're going to center it. So line the back piece, the back of the yellow, up with the scored line of the blue. And that will center it into the middle. Yes, so just like that. 
Sorry, that took me a second to remember. <laughs> oh, and I already scored that piece. And it does get a little bit tricky to assemble towards the end because everything is just popping in, so. And then our blue piece, this is the, this is kind of weird too, to put the adhesive on it. And then we're just going to stick that on the purple. So I just like to do it very lightly at the start and then I'll push it down afterwards to seal it. Okay, so I just push that down really, really lightly and then I'll come from the back and just push it down harder. Okay. All right, does anybody have any more questions? This is our final card. So I think it turned out super cute. Thank you guys for all of your suggestions. Um, if you, we have a few more minutes, so if you have any questions, I can stick around for a few minutes. Um, if you don't have any questions, we'll probably wrap it up. Um, but I'm just gonna hold out for a sec um, and just see if any more questions come in. I know it's a pretty easy class. Um, so I know there's probably not a ton of questions because we just loaded it, cut it, and then unloaded it, and then assembled it. Um, so it's super awesome. If you have the silhouette machine, it's the best um, thing that you can use to make cards like this because this is so easy. Can you imagine if you just had to cut out all the pieces of scissors? That would be really hard, and it would take you a long time. So I love the silhouette machine. Um, I love making cards like this. I definitely um, gravitate towards like paper cards more than like vinyl projects. So I love doing stuff like this. Somebody asked, or Ibati asked, does this machine cut fabric? And it does cut fabric. Um, the Cameo 4 does. Um, you need the rotary blade um, to cut like without any stabilizer. But if you have a stabilizer, you can also cut it. Um, so it looks like we don't have any other questions. So thank you guys so much for joining us. It's been great to have you. Make sure you join our class next week too. We have Kelly and she's an awesome teacher. So thank you so much for joining us and have a great weekend.